Yep, that's right, my skin is now officially available in Rust. Pretty much from the moment this video goes live, you can get this skin for free. All you have to do is watch any Rust stream. For all the information you need, go to twitch.facepunch.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you my new 2x1 design. But before we jump into that, I have an important message. To celebrate that my skin has been added to Rust, I'm giving away Amazon gift cards. I'm giving away two $50 and four $25 Amazon gift cards. Now here's what you gotta do. You gotta leave a like and comment on this video. Of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel and join my Discord server and react to the giveaway bot, which you can find in the giveaways channel. Links will be in the description. Now it is important to tell you that once again everything in this build video is timestamped. You can find those in the description of this video. First off, I'm going to talk about the base itself, I'm going to show you the base, and I'm going to talk about the expectations and group size for this base. Then we'll shortly go over upkeep and build costs, combined with how the external TCs work with an overview of the footprint. And after that, I will show you how to build the base in every step. Now, this base is originally focused around a 2x1. To get it up from the start, it's not the most practical thing, but it's not super hard to do. It can actually turn out to be relatively strong when you just have your first and second floor and your honeycomb 2x1 up, which is very useful against early offline raid attempts. I definitely would not consider this base to be the best against offline raiding. Although, when it comes to standards that you need for defending your base, in online raids, I would say this base has everything you need. What is good to know is that we will be building this base in its ultimate form. There is parts you could of course leave out to make the base cheaper if you want. The base offers a lot of room for your own preferences as well and I would likely advise you to use your own imagination and to try and somewhat shift the original design. When designing the base, I wanted to do something that had a wide gap, had inner peaks and had some kind of honeycombed core. And this is pretty much one of the cheapest ways I could come up with. And that combined with the new offset bunker I showed in a recent video, the space turned out to be very strong. Next to the base, having a wide gap shooting floor, having multi TCs and having disconnectable external TCs that can be turned into bunkers where you could even hide your loot in if you want to. Space is especially focused around high mobility, as many peak angles as you can possibly have and need from both shooting floor and inner peaks and roof, and of course all of the other standards you expect in a normal 2022 Rust base design. For the initial core and for the external TCs if you like, we will be using the new offset bunker, which was originally created by Dutch Loss and that I covered a video about recently. If you are not familiar with this concept, I recommend you watch that video first to get the idea right. The group size I recommend for this base depends on the way you play Rust. And of course, if you're playing a modded server or not. I would say on a classic vanilla wipe, this base would be perfect for a foreman. But if you have an active farmer, or if you like to farm yourself, could even do it as a two-man. Now let's talk about the footprint of the base. Initially, we have our main core 2x1 that's honeycombed. Now it's important to know that the two squares that are aligned to the honeycomb of the 2x1 are actually connected to the base, but they are offset. Furthermore, the two other shorter sides are multi t seed Then on both sides, centered, I have two wide gaps that have their own TC as well. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier as well, this base can be built in different stages and variants. When talking about upkeep and build costs, I'm going to go out from the fact you're building this base to its full potential. It is, however, important to know that you can make it cheaper if you decide to leave certain things out. Now, if you decide to fully build this base straight away in stone, I would say you would need a maximum of four boxes of stone. It's pretty much three, about 90k, but to be on the safe side, I recommend going for four boxes. You could also do three boxes and one box metal if possible. The upkeep, on the other hand, is where it gets interesting. With everything built, the main TC of the base is about 4,000 metal frags and 5,000 stone and 100 high qual if you make high qual what I made high qual. The two externals that are connected to the base are both about 1.5k metal and 3k stone each. The two wide gap TCs, however, are even cheaper, 
about 600 metal frags and 1000 stone. Of course, once again, if you build the entire base, how I do it on the video and you don't leave things out. Total upkeep would pretty much come down to about 13k stone, 9k metal, and about one to 200 high qual a day. Now with that said, let's jump into the build. Now for this build, we're doing a two by one and it's a relatively small base. So it doesn't really matter if the terrain is not too flat. Of course, if the terrain is flat, it will make it easier to build, but it's not a necessity. Now we're going to start with a standard two by one, but we're not going to use an airlock. We're gonna use a double door as the way in. And then on one of the sides, we're gonna have a triangle where we attach this and we put the TC with a window. This base could as easily be built from just the TC with a window or a door as the initial starter, just that triangle. Now here you want to do walls and this wall right here, you want to make that in wood. The rest you close in and this is your initial starter. Of course, the base is quite weak, so it's important we start on reinforcing it as soon as possible. At the door on this side, you can put walls and then you can have a furnace which will be your jump up for now. Now up here, you could make an airlock, but it is important that you don't place that triangle and it's important you have a jump up here, then you could place the door. Now this will allow you to still have an airlock, but you just can't jump up there yet, and that is fine. We do the same on the other side, and this floor or this wall right here is supposed to be picked out eventually, but for now we're gonna leave that wood. Of course it's important to uh, know and get into the base, so what you wanna do is for now on this side, you wanna just place a twig jump up, and on these two sides, we want to add honeycomb as well. It is important that you don't fill the honeycomb in on the top. Now from here, we're going to have to do the offset bunker layout. Uh, in both sides of the honeycomb, we're going to have to do this. Now, as you are aware, I made a video about this, which you can check here. It's originally created and found by a guy called Dutch Loss, So I would recommend to check that out. Now, at this point, we're going to do the same at both sides. So what I'm going to do here is also pliable to the other side of the base. What you want to do is in twig, a triangle there with a square. And right here, we're going to start creating the offset. So we do one triangle and then we do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. As you can see, I'm just counting the ones that have this horizontal face that way. So you can see uh, there should be eight of those. Now what you want to do at the end is place a square and then you want to remove all the ones and all the twig that we just placed. Now from the square, you want to build back with squares all the way until you reach your base. And what you'll notice is that you cannot place this triangle. You want to remove everything except the final square. It's basically like a multi-TC. In this case, it is still connected to the base. Now, it is important to know and have some metal at this point in your base because some walls aren't going to be reachable anymore. I recommend to upgrade this wall. This one, you don't have to because it's inside. I also recommend to do the same on the other side and upgrade that one, not the left one. Not the right one, but the left one right there. As it's in the honeycomb and you won't be able to reach it anymore. Now from here, you want to put two hall foss facing outwards like that. And then you want to go on top of your base and you want to place a triangle and you want to apply the same logic that I did in the offset video bunker. So you want to go down, 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 down until there. And that's where you want to place the triangle. Now this triangle doesn't matter. Just place it like that. Totally fine. In here, however, you want to do the same, but since this wall is already played, placed, we can't really apply the logic that I used in the video. So what you want to do is you want to basically just place it in twig until you can, until you realize that you can close it in like this. Now I got it in one try. As you notice, it's also important that you test your bunker. So if you place the triangle there and we place a roof right here, the bunker opens. Make sure you test that and make sure you test that for the other side as well. It is extremely important to do that. Now at this point for now, you could actually just seal in this side. Now what I do recommend at this point is that you focus on the way up and you want to get rid of this square and you want to put a triangle here. This is all honeycomb and you want to seal that off. And then on top of that, you want to place a single door. Now from here, since we're creating a double bunker, it's important that you don't just close this in with walls and floors on top. What you can do is wherever you have these two half walls, you want to continue that up with another two half walls. And the same goes here. And for the rest, you want to place walls absolutely everywhere. Want to go around like that. Now on the top, this is the side that will be the way up. So it's important we leave this open. The same goes on the other side. However, this side you need to be careful that you don't affect the bunker. Now, you shouldn't shouldn't affect it, but what I do recommend is you build this in one go and test the bunker straight away. 
that if you have done something wrong, you can still demolish in the time. So this is all honeycomb, which you can seal in like this. Um, if you want to, you could even make this into a loot room, but we're just going to seal it all in. And um, this side will actually be a loot room. Now, like this. So you can have that. Place the frames. Um, I like to have three furnaces at this side of the place. As you can see. For the rest, you want to seal in the rest, but we're just going to seal in the top. A quick note here. Um, it is actually very important that you leave this floor up here wood. After you make that wood and you pick that out, you can do this and um, place a ladder hatch right there. That should be fine. And then up here, I'm going to do the same logic again. So I'm going to look as far away as possible. Look down, 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 down. And as soon as we can place this one, we place it. This one doesn't matter. And this one, we have the bunker, which should work like that. Now, at this point, it's very important you test it. Very important. So we test it. You can see it breaks this one and it should still break that one. So we're good. On this side, we're good. I can leave that open for now. We should do the same on the other side. Now, a funny fact is that your base at this point is somewhat expensive to offline and online raid. What you can do is when you're playing and you're going out for roaming, you can close in these initial bunkers right before you leave, which makes your, uh, your base significantly more expensive to raid. Now, at the end build, there should be a wall here. For now, there's not a wall. So uh, it can be splashed. So it's important that you make this high call as soon as you can. Now from here, we're going to work on the outer ring. So we're going to uh, remove the jump up for now. Now that's this square that we have already built. We simply place two more squares. This part is pretty simple. That's it for this part. Right? So we place these two triangles here attached to this corner. What you want to do then is either to one side. It doesn't matter which one. I like to go from the center and then the left. We place... Uh, triangle and then a square and then another square like this now we remove everything else why we do that is because this square needs to be multi tc offset it right now it's connected and there needs to be a multi tc gap and you want to do that in the same direction that you originally were looking out from aka in my case it's towards the west right so we simply want to offset this square to multi tc so what we're going to do is we're going to build out seven more squares including this one so this is one square two three four five six seven eight so seven more eight in total triangle at the end basic multi tc so remove everything here for now we leave that one square there so we can be remembered where it's supposed to be we build back with half moons and we should end up with something like that where place this square triangle and then the final square like that and there we go there we have created the multi tc offset that we needed which is that direction west so we're gonna do the same exact on the east side as well later on so for now uh upgrade the square and there should be a gap place two walls here there should be a gap and from here what you want to do is attach a twig square and then go back and build basically the same layout on the other side like this upgrade all that and we have the one side outside of course this is not connected to a tc this is also not connected to each other now it is but now it isn't so it's important that we somewhat connect this to each other very soon for now what you could do is simply just go with the wall outlines like that um just so that they are connected but it still needs to be connected to the external tc now for the tc we're gonna want to center it and as you notice we're kind of stuck with this corner right if we want to and i like symmetry so what you want to do is wherever you have the door and the same goes on the other side of the base as well place square and then a triangle you remove the square like that for now we're going to connect that with uh, two frames and another frame right here now we want to create a disconnectable tc and we want to do that so that if our main tc gets raided we can disconnect our tcs and replace the main tc while we don't have to destroy all the other tcs because they take over now originally i believe mini satori came up with this disconnectable tc and this is my kind of like variant where we apply the same offset bunker to the tcs making them super expensive to raid so i'm gonna go one two three four squares out and then with triangles now these squares need to be need to be gone we're gonna create an offset bunker and we want to initially offset this triangle and this one those are the two we want to offset this one is supposed to be gone that one is supposed to be there so since this one is supposed to be there we're gonna just make it metal and then we're gonna just build out and build the offset so we're gonna do a square again and then from here want to do eight of these triangles again so now we have two three four five six seven eight square at the end and then remove everything that we just placed that's twig 
of course that triangles those triangles are supposed to be twig as well and we build back with squares until you reach this point and once you reach this point we move that triangle place that triangle like that and now you upgrade those two and remove everything else from here two half walls on this side just gonna make everything stone and the rest should all be full walls now to connect the tc it's fairly fairly simple just gonna show you um you place a temporary frig uh, twig right there and you do that you place all these you upgrade all these and you remove this frame and it should stay like that you should place a roof here the middle part here will disconnect it will it will destroy get destroyed which means that the tc is disconnected and you could potentially replace the main tc in case you do get raided this triangle is supposed to be attached to that there's nothing else it can attach to so it's fine to just place that like that and this one is supposed to be attached to that wall this one doesn't matter and so this should work and just to show you that it works right there this one the tc and it also opens the bunker you notice that it also opened this side that's not supposed to happen if that happens then you've placed this triangle wrong you should place it like that so it's attached to the walls and not to the same kind of uh, socket override so connect that back and we close the bunker like this now you could either just literally full honeycomb this with walls and place the tc here which can be accessed from the top what you can also do is place the tc on the other side create a window create a floor and then place some boxes in here with a furnace so that it's easy to jump in and out of the thing of course for this we also do the same tc on the other side once again i would just like to point out that it is extremely important to test your bunkers make sure you test it while you still can demolish stuff because if you mess it up then these won't open and the same goes on the externals it is extremely important to do that because they're somewhat easy to mess up so don't fool yourself now at this point i would say a compound with large furnaces is relatively important considering the uh, starter core is somewhat strong fun thing is that we still need the two externals on the other side now these are going to be wide capped so what you want to do is at least have a triangle on this single uh this single square right here that's very important now this step could be a little bit confusing to some of you what we want to initially do is wide gap from this triangle and we want to wide gap offset that direction but then also that direction and what it creates it creates a perfect wide gap that's centered exactly after this triangle it's basically a double wide gap at that point but what it allows us is that we have one wide gap with one tc on this entire side instead of having one wide gap here and one wide gap here leaving us with six or seven total tcs right so what you want to do is from this triangle you build out two triangles and a square simple and then we're going to do one half moon two half moon three half moons like that uh, triangle at the end and remove everything that we have just placed of course not that one then we build back with squares until you reach this point right here where you cannot well you can't place a square but it's like that but you're supposed to place a triangle here and you will see that if we were to white gap now we'd have the white gap good on this side but not on that side as you can see we we can't even build out there which is a problem so what you want to do is you want to just keep that triangle right here and from this one we want to white gap that direction as well with triangle triangle and then square and then three half moons again so one two three triangle at the end and then remove everything else you can leave this one just for reference it's kind of easy to do that because it's quite easy to mess this stuff up right so at the end we'll see uh, there's not supposed to be a square here there's supposed to be a triangle and what you'll notice is if we upgrade that and we remove all of this this triangle is literally perfectly aligned it's perfectly aligned and it's perfectly wide gapped and from here the layout should be twig or uh, should be triangles square on that side square on that side triangle here triangle here upgrade this one upgrade this one upgrade this one upgrade this one remove this remove that and have the wide gap frames that's it this is pretty much it the rest will be going from this one and this one for the shooting floor but for now it's important you just have this one now again we're gonna create the same exact disconnectable slash bunker tcs on this one 
and on the other side as well this is eventually something uh this is what it should look like when you're done now we can either decide to build up the outer ring or if you want your large furnaces up we can uh, start building the compound what i like to have is the way out and in from the compound uh, right here with a double door if you want to have a barricade up here you could realize that this is pretty impossible to place I know. You should still be able to place it like this with twig. And you just go as far out as you possibly can. Like there. And you should be able to just demolish all this. And you have a beautiful uh, barricade. You do that on the other side as well. Now for these, we uh, don't. I don't want to put a door here. But of course you could. Basic idea is that wherever this, these two squares attach, you place one of the walls. Like that. Kind of the same way. And right here, we place a wall kind of going a little bit outwards from the compound like that make sure that there's enough space for this and this triangle that's the most important now here as long as you go a little bit like towards each other you should be able to perfectly seal in the corner so necessarily you would only need 16 walls for the compound to be sealed and you will have enough uh, space to fit probably eight furnaces but you will have at least enough space for um four now once you got your compound going you should be able to safely work on your outer ring that speaks for itself. Outer ring. It's pretty basic. We're simply just gonna go all the way around of the foundations that we have already placed. Now in this outer triangle, you place a floor like that. Then you place a frame above it. And above that, a window that faces. For the front door, you want to place single doors like this. With a floor on top. You do the same on that side too. Then you want to do a half wall. And you want to do windows like this. With the floor on top like that same on the other side now to make things easier and a bit more cover for yourself you could even build the third floor walls so we just build all the way around a quick adjustment here but the um walls shouldn't be full walls all the way around these two should be windows if you like these peaks there's the outer one you're gonna want to put another half wall on top and in here this is kind of important you want to put a ladder hatch right there um, this allows you to just stand here. That's very important. You do the same on the other side. If you don't have ladder hatches or gears yet, it doesn't matter. You could, you could literally just leave these shafts open. Now for the peak downs, this is this is kind of important to know the logic in this. I recommend that more doors should lead towards your bedroom, and less doors, aka left from here, should lead towards the way up. Because eventually there'll be the same amount of doors anyway to get through for a radio, right? Now. We want to use conditional formatting here. So what you want to do, at least on the single square with the two uh, two triangles, is to do these. But you want to rotate these. And what it creates is on the outside, it creates this conditional wall corner. You want to do the same on the other side. What I like to do um, is have the door at the front door. So you have this kind of general flow that you can simply open door, open door, open door. And you're basically on your way up to the peak downs very fast. Here we do conditional formatting again, as you can see, and now it closes off this gap completely. It's important you do that for everything. And we go uh, up here, but for the second floor, we do two half walls, remove the bottom ones and do low walls. For the ways up, you're probably, the advanced builders are probably gonna laugh at me for this, but I just like to have these uh, because it allows you to have somewhat of a jiggle peak here where you can cross sideways. As you can see on the top, we place this one and not for a ladder hatch, but simply to break the uh, conditional for the for the stairs, as you see, as you can see, what happens is when we go up here, this peak is kind of nice uh, because you can you can go sideways. It's kind of an optional one; it's not a mandatory one. Um, and we're up here, and as you can see, this like ladder thing is gone now. For the other side, we have the bedroom. The bedroom doesn't really matter. For the bedroom, what I like to do is have the same peak, but instead here we actually do use a ladder hatch, place like that. And we have the same exact peak here. So the two half walls and then the bottom ones removed. Turn into a low wall. And then close it off completely on the top. Now once you're done with these. I do the peaks like this. But again you can do them the way you want to. I like to have a square here. Because it kind of breaks this. And makes this into a ankle biter peak for your peak downs. It's the same as on the other side. And for the outer ones. We simply go with the shark toots like that. All right, now we continue with securing the peak down floor. So these two, where we, we just did the window correction, we're going to um, put two full walls. These could be hard to place. And now out here, we have to uh, 
doors. That one is a bedroom. This one is simply the way up. And you close those on the top. This one, however, uh, you can put a frame in here and then do floors like that. But make sure you have one of them that is a ladder hatch. Now up here, we're kind of closing off the top. Uh, this shape cannot be repeated. And so it's very important you don't misplace walls here. Because you won't be able to close off the base. And for now, we're just going to focus on closing it off first. Right? So, we're going to have these two closed. And then out here, we're simply going to follow the uh, outline of the base. Now you'll notice, <laughs> you'll notice the multi-TC part. Um, what you want to do is create a shape that looks... Something like that. You could also attach this triangle there. But I recommend to do it like that. One thing that you can for sure do. Is place this wall in the middle. That one has to be there. With two triangles. Which should be ladder hatches. That are facing towards each other. Like this. But to avoid splash. You could already place the wall on top. If you want to. But you don't have to. Um, and then for the rest. You should be able to close this off. But you could have some stability problems. Like we have one on that side, but not on the other side. Um, if you do, that's fine. You can place a frame here, here, and here. And then make sure that these are conditional again. This one is not, so we want to make sure we rotate it. And the same way I know it's on the other side. Now you do the same frames on this side. And now you should have enough stability to place these. Um, and these. To the outside. Like that. Should be left with a shape that looks like this. Now in here your bunker should probably be open. And um, up here you'll notice this one. This wall you can't place. This one you can but you don't want to. Uh, this one you can. You basically can't place walls anywhere. So what we are going to do is simply. Still kind of like secure it. By using um, low walls. Half, half walls and low walls. So for now this is pretty much the way to go. And what we want to do here is, I like to do single doors, but if you're really deep, just for the flow of the base, you can do double doors. Of course, the bunkers should be open at this point. At this point, you should also have replaced this door with a garage door. This should now have been turned into a wall, and this wall should have been placed as well. And this should be your initial base. And this wall should, of course, be picked out, the wooden one. And this wall should be a wall. There you go. For the shooting floor, the most important part of this space we have a wide gap so if we want to build up wide gap frames all the way till the, above the third floor and the same as on the other side now this is kind of like a shooting floor that's somewhat of a wide gap but also somewhat of a traditional shooting floor i would say so for the side where you have this like triangle door at right you want to put two triangles on the floor and on both sides you want to build up frames now these frames are not mandatory but i like to have them for extra stability and you build them up like that and for the wide gap, square there, triangle there, triangle there. Now, are those frames really necessary? No, they're not. You could actually leave them out. I like to have it, but it is an addition. You don't need it if you want to make your base cheaper. Now, simple to go around with uh, windows all the way. But this only goes for if you want to build the base without the outside shoots. If you want to add the outside chute, which is another addition to the base you can do. If you want to not have these two top frames, you want to make sure they are windows. And you want to not place anything on these two sides. And from there, if you want it, you want to just simply build up. Until you reach this floor where we use half walls. Here you have a ladder hatch with ladders on the inside and a door. And you just go up like that. Windows there, half fall there, floor there if you want to. Right, so for the inside of the shooting floor. On this side where you have this beautiful weird ass peak. Never really see them. Uh, we want to do double doors. And you want to probably put the siren light here so you can't fall down. But some people like that you can fall down. Now continuing on. What is useful, what I usually do is somewhat lay out how I want stuff before I build it. So like on here, I want two walls. With a floor in the middle. With a single door up here. And then just close that off completely. Same goes on this side. 
I'm gonna follow the same squares with the bedrooms again. So I want them in this corner. So this initial shooting floor will be broken up into multiple parts. I like that better, so you can keep more control. So for the corners, corners, we're just gonna put walls. Now on these, we just put uh, frames for now. And if you want, you could already decide to just fully... Uh... I'm gonna have a turret here eventually, but I like to hide a battery up here for now. That's, that's just my idea on it. And we close off the rest of the shooting floor, basically following whatever is below. Now, once you're done with that, we can work on the inner bedrooms to include lockers on them. So what I want to do is put um, a triangle like that with frames like this and do the same on this side. And the triangle will have the locker. Now, it is, of course, extremely important you use my new locker skin, which we talked about in the intro. Very, very important. And on top of that, you place your window like that. Of course, if you want to be super annoying to raiders, you could potentially, literally, seal in the, the the lockers, put a window on them. Because of the wide gaps and because how, of how expensive it is to raid the externals, it would also they would also never be able to pick up the window and never loot your kits. So think about that. Now this triangle, however, to uh, kind of get rid of the gap here, which you could possibly lo loot the locker through. So we want to make sure that this triangle is attached to the wall here. Because as you notice, is there is no gap left. So we close that off, and the same goes on that side, and the same goes on this side, and the same goes on this side. For the initial core, it depends on what you like. Um, I like to have somewhat of a storage. So like, this wall could be uh, a little bit tricky to place. You should be able to, but it's just tricky, right? So we have a loot room on this side, and then we mirror it. Very important, we have a door here, so we have some kind of like... So we have two like extra loot rooms, which allow us to uh, quickly depot loot on the roof if we want to. Um, or hide loot, whatever you want. Frame there, frame there. So let me show you from up top, right? So frame here, frame here. So we have this kind of like inner ring and then we have this kind of like outer ring. This of course has to be secured more. Um, I like to use a single door there and a window so you can look through to your peaks and we do the same on the other side. It's pretty much the layout that I like to go for. And of course there needs to be a way up to the, to the roof outside of this door so it's somewhat expensive even if they raid through this ladder hatch and you should be left with something like this now all that's left to do is to secure the roof um i like to have some spot of turrets so we can do uh, a half fall there with a roof or floor on top like that um i also like to have somewhat of like use the roof to kind of block the the white gap gaps so what we do is do something like that and up the up on these ones we do triangle roofs as well make sure you place the uh, bottom roofs first right now for the initial build this is pretty much it that's this is pretty much it there's windmill towers that you can build and there's a lot of like doors and garage doors that i did in place but like nothing of that is really part of the build that you can figure that out for yourselves i hope now that was it for this one once again i would like to thank all of you for your recent support and your support over the years i'm super proud and thankful to finally have my own skin in the game and of course i could not have done that without you guys once again if you want a skin all you have to do is go to twitch.facepunch.com link your steam account link your twitch account and watch any rust stream that has drops enabled to get my skin it's a generic drop and so you don't need to watch any particular streamer and not particular me either. As you know, I don't really stream on Twitch. Now, I might do some streams, but that's not the point. Either way, I hope to see you all rocking some Sven Lockers in the game very soon. And I hope you all can get one. For now, I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.